Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Hello, I'm Sarah Murphy. Thanks for joining us this evening for ABC4 News at 10. We begin tonight with an update on the Great Salt Lake. Now, we've seen a record-breaking snowfall this winter, and it's starting to melt. Now, we're watching as all this water flows into the Great Salt Lake. ABC4's Annika Johns joins us live in studio after meeting with a professor who says that all this water, while it might be an issue in some areas, is helping get the lake levels rise. Annika. That's right, Sarah. While officials with the Division of Water Resources says that it will take much more than one above average winter to replenish the lake's water levels, this year's snowfall and now floods are undoubtedly improving and helping get the lake back to its former glory. Last year, the Great Salt Lake was in a dire situation. You know, last fall, uh, the lake was at its all-time low level. So we were looking at um, two-thirds of the lake bed being exposed. But after a winter full of record-breaking snowfall, the future of the lake just got a whole lot brighter. This the snowpack this year has, has been amazing. I mean, a real godsend. The Division of Water Resources says that the lake has already risen three feet since last November. And with the ongoing runoff and snowmelt, that number is expected to increase. The estimates that I've seen range from two to four additional feet. But that all depends on where we choose this water to go. It also depends on what we do with our reservoirs, because the reservoirs are uh, able to store a lot of that capacity and that can allow later use. On the other hand, that keeps the water from making it to Great Salt Lake, where it could benefit these issues that we're seeing. Abbott explains the decision as a balancing act between choosing the health of the lake and having enough water accessible for those who need it. But no matter where the water ends up, the time to conserve is now. We can't expect uh, nature year after year to give us above average winters, especially now facing these issues of climate change and long-term drought. Abbott says that the efforts made to save the lake aren't going to waste and that this winter and the floods we are and will see gives us extra time that we need. I know that it's really hard to be grateful when your basement's flooding or uh, your road is collapsing, but this, this actually is the lifeblood of Great Salt Lake. There is still a lot of work to be done now and in the future, but Abbott believes that if Utah continues down this path of conservation and retention, we won't be saying goodbye to the Great Salt Lake just yet. This is not a political issue. It's not an urban versus rural issue. This is a, a Utah issue. And that really does give me hope and faith that we can um, do this together. Abbott and his colleagues published a report in January where they looked at the decline of the lake. They estimated we have five years to save the lake before it collapsed. But now, because of this winter, we have approximately a year or two more added to that five-year timeline. 